The 10-2 ninth ranked Dayton Flyers riding a nine game winning streak will be taking on the 9-4 24th ranked VMI Cadets today in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. We have only have one more game left after this one folks. This is a big one though. Keller and the Cadets are Big 12 champions and Jared Martin and the Dayton Flyers are Big 10 champions. Taking a look at the last few Sports Illustrated. A bunch of our players got some covers here. And there's Lamar Jackson, best quarterback in the country. And now let's take a look at the Dayton Flyers schedule. They are 10-2 on the season, 8-0 in the Big Ten Conference. They did lose two of their first three games. They completely destroyed San Jose State, 63-0. And at that point, that's when I knew Dayton was going to be something special this year. Because, I mean, San Jose State... It's probably one of the worst of the FBS schools in this dynasty. But the fact that Dayton blew them out 63-0, which is so impressive. They have had quite a few close games this season. UNI, they beat by a field goal. And they beat Delaware by one point. That was their last game of the year. BMI, 24th in the country. They started off 0-3. The halfback, Cam Sanders, was suspended for, I believe, all three of those games. Well, once they got him back, they were on a tear. They beat Chattanooga 52-10. Beat Furman 48-3. Beat Southeast Missouri State 42-10. Then they had a couple close games here against North Dakota State and McNeese State. They lost to Western Carolina. The Catamounts were dangerous. I don't care what their record is on the year. Then they shut out Southeastern 49-0. Beat Tennessee Tech and shocked the world and beat UTEP. Just absolutely destroyed them. Cam Sanders was... A man amongst boys that day putting the team on his back and here we are their final game of the season Dayton versus VMI and to pick them Dayton is the favorite with 15 votes VMI with 11 votes so let's see what the guys think about it there's the top players I'll see you guys down the field here in a moment I'm Brad Nessler joined by the coach Lee Corso and the quarterback Kirk Herbstreet Clear skies and just beautiful weather here for tonight's game between the Flyers and the home team. Happy New Year, everybody. As usual, the 1st of January brings a lot of hard-hitting action. And here comes the home team. The Flyers come into this game expecting a win. I tend to agree with that. How about you, Herbie? The away team has one of their best players lining up in their backfield. Lee, expect a huge game from him running the football and maybe even catching a few passes. He's a tremendous athlete, and they'll use him as much as they can. I like it, Kirk. That's an excellent pick. I really believe that these guys are going to do it. Now, that looks good on you, Lee. Anyway, let's send it down to the field. Dayton, the overwhelming favorites today. Everybody's picking them. And the VMI Cadets wearing their blackout uniforms. Dayton wearing their whiteouts. This is going to be a fun one. Amari Manuel on the opening kickoff up past the 20-yard line. And we're going to see this flyer offense take the field first. Jared Martin at quarterback. He's got 2,270 yards passing this season. 26 touchdowns, 13 picks, and two rushing touchdowns as well. He's going to come out with five wide receivers set here on first and 10. Martin going to throw it. And nice pass over here to the middle of the field. First down, or not a first down, excuse me. That was Jenkins on the catch. Picks up about eight yards. But he was just wide open, just sat in an empty zone. And a perfect throw from Jared Martin. The Flyers with the third best offense in the country this season. They have been great running the football. And here is the fullback up the middle. First down and more. Nice run for the non-subscriber fullback. I believe his name is McLean. He's back in there after being injured for a several games taking a look at the rest of the flyer offense Dorian Wura is the number two quarterback smash Jackson a halfback Amari Manuel at wide receiver and here's a deep shot wide open down the right sideline the ball's caught and that is an easy touchdown pass for Jared Martin Wesley on the touchdown reception what happened to the coverage my goodness play action Oh, man, the cornerback got caught looking into the backfield. And Wesley's wide open, non-subscriber receiver with a huge touchdown to open things up. 
But anyways, the Dayton Flyers offense is finished out by Trent Green and James Skaggs at tight end. They combined for 54 catches on the year, 914 yards and six touchdowns. So pretty good tight end duo here for Dayton. Now just like that, folks, not even a minute off the clock, and Dayton is on top. I didn't even get a chance to mention one player <laughs> on the Kidets yet. Dayton, of course, with uh, John Gruden at the helm, Mr. Head Coach. VMI has Ron Dave Barber. And VMI to return the kickoff. Joseph Martin and Bryson Shields back to return. And here is Shields. And he'll get taken out of about the 17-yard line. So not a very good return for him. And here we are taking a look at the Kedet offense. Justin Hops under center at quarterback. Cam Sanders behind him at halfback. Matt Keller in at fullback blocking for Sanders. Joseph Martin and Jason Wright at wide receiver. And Jake Berry at tight end. And here's Cam Sanders getting a carry on a counter play. And he gets nothing. Rob Orlandi on the stop. This is Orlandi's first game back after a major injury. Sideline him for several games. So I'm glad to see him back. Middle linebacker position. He's got 10 picks on this season. Here's an option play from Hops, and he's going to pick up the first down. Nice juke move still going up to the 35-yard line. Great play for the Kidet offense. And taking a look at the Flyer defense. Tank Taylor at defensive tackle. Cash Harris at defensive end. Rob Orlandi at middle linebacker, of course. And Jermaine Price and Gloves Malone are the two cornerbacks. Gloves Malone still looking for his first career interception, guys. Option play again. Cam Sanders has it. Picks up seven or eight yards. Getting taken out of bounds, and he's injured on the play. Injured his shoulder. This could be huge for the Kidet offense. I don't know how well they're going to be able to do with a non-subscriber halfback in there. That's going to bring up second down and two. And they're going to have to rely on Justin Hopps, Legs, and Matt Keller as well. Hopps with over 900 rushing yards on the season, 13 touchdowns, but he has 12 fumbles this season. Second down and two. And they'll go option again. Hopps pitches to the non-subscriber halfback. He gets lit up by Gloves Malone. What a hit. Gloves Malone actually leads the Dayton Flyer defense in tackles, and it's not even close due to the injury to Rob Orlandi. Gloves Malone has 45 tackles now. Rob Orlandi with 37. So Malone will most likely end up leading this team in tackles for the entire season. Third down and six. Two tight ends to the right side. Hops to throw it. He's going to get sacked. And it's Cash Harris, his fourth sack of the season. 19 tackles, 9 for a loss, 4 sacks. He has a pass deflection and a fumble recovery. Definitely the most or the least impactful defensive end um, in the entire country, <laughs> for our 12 schools at least. He hasn't done a whole lot, but he makes a nice play there, setting up a 4th down and 6 situation for VMI. They're going to punt this football away to Amari Manuel. He has not broken one for a touchdown all season long. And this is a nice punt. Actually, it's Gloves Malone, excuse me, on the kick return. Or punt return. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't know football, guys. First down and 10 for Dayton from their own 20-yard line. Will they have similar success like their first drive? Ending in a 58-yard touchdown pass. Shotgun set. Smash Jackson to the left of Martin. Trent Green at tight end. They're going to go play action again. And this pass is dropped this time by Wesley. So no big gain right there. It should have been another big completion down the field. But the defense was completely bamboozled on that one. They all went to the halfback. Jared Martin was left all by himself to throw that football. Five wide receivers set for the Flyers. Second down and ten. Martin in the shotgun. And he will throw it. Quick pass over the middle. Trent Green. He has it for maybe three yards. So that is Trent Green's 41st catch of the season. And that will give him 704 yards receiving now with four scores. VMI fans getting behind their defense. 
This is the same exact formation as the last play from the 22-yard line. Martin to throw. Pressure hit as he throws it, and that is incomplete. Trey Upton was applying the pressure right up the middle. Great blitz by the middle linebacker. Upton with 46 tackles, 15 for a loss, three sacks on the season. Two picks, eight deflections, a forced fumble, and two recovered. He's been a great player for this cadet defense. Bryson Shields to return the punt. Left side, breaks a tackle up to the 43-yard line, setting up the cadet offense in great field position. I still don't believe I've gone over the VMI defense yet, but we'll get to that next time. It's going to be fun next year when we have more than 11 subscriber players on all 12 teams. I'll be here announcing the players all day. That option play goes nowhere for VMI. So it will bring up second down and 10 here in the Fiesta Bowl. Single back set, hops under center, and he will throw it. Nice pocket, throws deep down the field, incomplete, deflected away by a non-subscriber linebacker. That's going to bring up third down and 10. VMI great on third down conversions this year. Ninth in the country at 54%. Absolutely fantastic. Well, this is a big one. Five wide receivers set. Hops to throw it. Left side deflected away. Almost picked off. That was an awful throw from Justin Hops, who is not the best passer in the world. Got over 2,100 passing yards, 18 touchdowns and 15 picks, but he's really been more so known for his running. Apparently this punter had a 61 yard punt the last time he kicked it, so this should be a good one as well. And it is inside the 15 yard line, goes Malone on the return, spins and tries to break a tackle but can't around the 20 yard line. Wells Malone with two punt returns for touchdowns this season. Over 375 yards on returns. He's been pretty decent for this team. A very solid cornerback with 15 pass deflections. He just hasn't had any interceptions. Two tight end sets. Max Jackson's going to get a carry. Left side in the open field. Picks up the first down. Attack on some yards for the face mask on Trey Upton. That'll get him the ball to the 36-yard line. Rondé Barber upset with the call or his player, either way, he is not happy. Hope you guys tuned in for the Jacksonville Cal Poly Sugar Bowl last night. That game was fantastic. Definitely a classic on the channel. If you have missed the game, go back, check it out. It's definitely worth a watch. Shotgun set, Martin play action, over the middle, incomplete. Dropped by the receiver, Jackson. And that's going to bring up a second down and 10 situation for number 99, Jared Martin. Two tight ends set to the left side. They've got two great tight ends, so they like to put them in there together. And there's an offsides penalty on Henry Hamilton. And with that, we'll finally take a look at the VMI defense. Henry Hamilton at defensive tackle. You just saw him jump offsides. William Reed at defensive end. Trey Upton at middle linebacker, Bryson Shields at corner, and Darius Peters at strong safety. He has been fantastic this season with 10 interceptions. And here's going to be another pass from Jared Martin. Nice diving attempt, and that is a catch for Trent Green, his second of the day. And he's going to be a yard shy of the first down. So two catches, only six yards today for him. 42 catches on the season now. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, guys, national championship game. Number one, Bryant taking on the number two, Fresno State Bulldogs. That's going to be a great matchup as well. It's the Bulldog Bowl. They're down to one. Goal line set for Dayton. Martin going to hand it off. Smash Jackson. Does he get the first down? It's close. And he's injured his hand on the play. And that could <laughs> be some bad news for Dayton as well. Did he get the first down? I don't think he did. He did not. Fourth and inches upcoming for Dayton. Are they going to go for it here at the 46-yard line? No, they will not. They're going to send on the punt unit. And 
And back to return is going to be Bryson Shields. He has two punt returns for scores on the year. And this is a high short kick to the 25-yard line. Fair catch for Shields. And we will see Justin Hopps in this offense take the field once again, looking for answers. Got to try to pound the rock, get this running game going somehow. Get the football to Matt Keller, your fullback. He's got six touchdowns running the football this year. And here's a play action. Hops is going to be dropped for the sack. That was too easy. I think that's Tank Taylor on the sack. The big defensive tackle is ninth of the season. Hops loses eight yards on the play. Dayton with the ninth ranked defense in the country, only allowing 293 per game. Hops to throw it again. Or try to. He's going to be sacked again, but there's a flag or a face mask on Tank Taylor. So instead of getting a second sack, they're going to move him forward to make it second down and 13. John Gruden talking to the referee on the sideline, trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> how they made that call. It's pretty obvious, very obvious uh, face mask penalty there. Second down to 13, two tight ends to the left side for Hops. And he will throw it again. And he is hit, and he's picked off. Rob Orlandi's got it. Inside the 10, Rob Orlandi with a pick six. Oh my goodness. His first pick six of his career. And his 11th pick of the season. That is tied for first in the country. Ridiculous. Cam Sanders couldn't bring him down. Oh my goodness, it's so great to see you back, Rob. What a fantastic play and a great way for him to make his comeback and make his presence known with a pick six. Dayton on top, 13-0. Penning this extra pointer be 14-0. And it is up and good. Dayton with a two touchdown lead here in the first quarter. BMI reeling right now, they have no answers on offense. They keep trying to throw the football, and Hops is either getting sacked, throwing bad passes, getting picked off. It's not looking pretty for them. Of course, their best target in the passing game has been tight end Jake Berry. 26 catches, 601 yards on the season with eight scores, and they have yet to target the big guy at all today. Bryson Shields and Joseph Martin set to return this kickoff, and that's going to be Joseph Martin from two yards deep taking it out. And he's going to go right side. He's in the open field on the 31-yard line. Nice return. Oh, no. <laughs> Another mental error on Jake Barry. you got to be kidding me. That's going to push them all the way back to their own 8-yard line. So nothing working for VMI so far. This will be the final play of the first quarter. Shotgun set. Tight end to the left. Hops is going to throw it again. Hops deflected at the line of scrimmage. That pass had zero air under it. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Dayton on top, 14-0 over the 24th ranked VMI Cadets. And the Big Ten looking like the superior conference right now, guys. VMI has done nothing today. Two tight ends set again. This time split to the right side. Cam Sanders gets a carry. He's dropped for no gain. Cash Harris on the tackle. And they'll actually give him credit for one yard. I don't know <laughs> where they saw him get one yard. Well, that's going to bring a third down and nine. Shotgun set, fullback and halfback to both sides of Justin Hops. Hops to throw it again. Pressure, hit as he throws, connects to the right sideline, and that is going to be two yards shy. And that was Jason Wright on the catch, his 23rd of the season. And that got him eight yards, so he has 478 yards receiving now with four touchdowns for his freshman year. And VMI going to punt the football away again. Of course, the crowd wanted him to go for it. That would have been an awful decision. And Gloves Malone from the 35-yard line. Look at how fast this man is. Up to the 45. Great return. Nice spin move for the corner. Gloves Malone has the same exact speed as MJ Gator Jr. And Smash Jackson has sprained his wrist. He's done for today. So we're going to see 
EJ Rowe, the backup halfback in here for the remainder of today's game. And they're going to give it off to him anyway. And he gets nothing on that carry. He did pretty solid for the Flyers when Smash Jackson was suspended for a few games this year. He did quite well for them, getting 100 yards a couple times, I believe. It's hard to remember the non-subscriber players. But I just remember that he did well. VMI with the 6th rank ranked defense in the country only averaging 265 yards allowed so two top 10 defenses in the land playing right now Martin to throw right side and that's caught again and that's Wesley once again Martin 5 of 8 81 yards and a touchdown today hops 1 of 5 8 yards and sacked 3 times and has an interception return for a touchdown so Jared Martin definitely winning the quarterback battle right now and it's not even close. Hops through his 16th pick of the year. Martin with 27 touchdowns. He's got a man wide open left side. He goes right side instead and he's picked off by the star cornerback who gets it up to the 36 yard line. I'm not sure what Martin was looking at here, but I saw a man wide open on a corner route on the left sideline. And instead, <laughs> he targets James Skaggs and that was just an awful decision by the quarterback. I don't know if you guys saw the, the corner route on the left side. But that man was by himself. So VMI's defense stepping up. Gets the interception. Now their offense needs to step up and get some points on the board. They're going to go counter here. And that goes nowhere. Rob Orlandi coming through on the blitz. Huge tackle for a loss. His seventh tackle for a loss this season. If he was not injured, he would have over 50 tackles this season easily and probably 12 or 13 picks. Second down and 11, I formation for VMI. And Hop's going to hand it off again. Sanders goes nowhere yet again. Cash Harris is having himself a great day. Tackle for a loss right there. Third and 11 upcoming. That's his ninth tackle for a loss this season. Both teams 0 for 3 on third down conversions today. Shotgun set, hops the throw. Left side, and that's almost picked off, off of the drop from Joseph Martin, it looked like, and it was Joseph Martin. Oh my goodness, fourth down and 11 now. The crowd booing the Cadets and their awful offense. Shaw on for the punt, he has been fantastic today. Gloves Malone back deep to return. Shaw kicks this one. This is a nice kick yet again inside the 20-yard line. Malone going to return it up the right sideline to the 25. And Jared Martin and this Dayton Flyer offense have great field position to start off again. Hopefully he uh, <laughs> took a look at some film after that last interception, saw what he did wrong, and can correct it for this drive. And he's going to come out single setback. And there is two tight ends to the right side. And they're going to go play action. Martin over the middle, and that's incomplete. Or is it caught? That was caught by Amari Manuel. Unbelievable catch. I had no idea where the ball went. That's his 25th catch on the season. And he's got 821 yards receiving with seven scores. That was a crazy play, and he threw it into so much traffic, I lost track of where the ball was. Shotgun set. And they're going to go play action again here. Right side to EJ Rowe. Runs a man over. Picks up five yards on the catch. Martin closing in on 2,400 passing yards for his freshman year. And that is extremely good considering he did not start every game. Dorian Wura, the backup quarterback now, has over 1,000 passing yards himself. So Jared Martin could be in contention for the quarterback of the year award next season. He's going to throw it again here. Pressure, he's sacked. Who got him? William Reed, his eighth sack of the season, coming through. Only his 18th tackle as well. Him and Cash Harris uh, of the Flyers are very similar players. They basically have identical stats coming into this game. Reed had 17 tackles, 11 for loss, 7 sacks. That's the biggest difference is the sacks. And Cash Harris had 18 tackles, 8 for a loss. And three sacks. They both have one pass deflection. And Martin's going to throw it again. Wide open. Right side again. Wesley 
out of bounds inside the 35 yard line. It looked like the same exact play he scored on earlier. And the cornerback just gets lost. I don't know what he's doing. He might have fell asleep at the wheel there. Another huge pickup for the non-subscriber receiver. Just completely torching the star corner. That's some great vision right there on that play by Jared Martin. High formation now. Play action again. Martin, deep shot again. Caught. No, he dropped it this time. Wesley with two drops now. And that could have been his second touchdown. Martin just bullying <laughs> the corner on the right side. That'll bring up second down and 10 from the 33-yard line of VMI. High formation set. Trent Green, tight end to the right side. He is on fire, folks. Watch for Martin to target him if it is a pass play. And they're going to hand it off up the middle instead. Rose got the first down. Nice carry. Picks up 12 yards. He is such a good halfback for a non-subscriber player. Like I said, he filled in nicely earlier in the season when Jackson was suspended. Jackson actually was suspended after... He had a seven-touchdown game, so just imagine if he played all season long, how many touchdowns that young man could have had. He had 17 coming into this game. Martin to throw it. All day, throws left side, deflected away at the last second. Great play by the safety and pass intended for Jackson, another non-subscriber receiver. That'll bring up second down and 10. We're under two minutes to play here in the first half already, guys. First half has went by pretty quickly. Jackson on fire on the left side. And they're going to toss it out the road to the right. Instead, he tries to spin past Trey Upton. That was a no-no. And he goes nowhere. Third down and 10 now at the 21. Martin going to come out in the shotgun set. Trent Green tight end to the right side. And they'll throw it. Martin pressured. And he is absolutely destroyed by William Reed. His second sack of the game, that gives him nine on the season. What a hit on the quarterback. Goodness gracious. Whoo, man, that hit gave me whiplash. Fourth down at 14 now for the Flyers. They're gonna attempt a very long field goal, 42 yards. I know it's not long <laughs> in real life. Like I said before, in most of the other games, these kickers are not very good. So this is a long field goal for this young man. And the kick is up, and he pushes it to the right. He had the strength on it, just a little bit far out to the right. So VMI catches a huge break. It's still a two-score ball game, but they need their offense to step up and put something on the scoreboard. Hops to throw it. Quick pass, left side, and it's almost intercepted by Gloves Malone off the drop pass. Receivers not helping Justin Hops today. Lots of drops. The offensive line's not helping. He's been sacked three times. The ground game isn't going either. Though so they're forcing Hops to throw it. It's a great game plan from John Gruden. And Hops is going to throw it again. He's picked off. Gloves Malone, his first pick of his career. And he has himself a pick six. Dayton on top. 20 to nothing. Oh, oh my goodness. Gloves Malone sure picked a swell time to get his first career interception. Man. And he just jumped in front of the receiver and you're not going to catch Gloves Malone in the open field. It's just not going to happen. It's like trying to catch MJ Gator Jr. It's the same exact thing. We just, I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised he only has one pick on the year. It just blows my mind. Extra point is up and good. Dayton on top, 21 nothing. They are routing the Kidets here in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 55 seconds left for VMI to do something. Hopefully, for their sake, not throw another pick six. Second one of the game for Hops. 16, or 17 picks on the season now. Two straight interceptions by him returned for touchdowns. Man. And the kickoff is to Joseph Martin, four yards deep in the end zone. He's going to kneel this one down, taking one second off the clock. If you're VMI, you got to try to establish a run game because the passing game is you just throw that out the window. 
I mean, if you do throw it out the window, it's probably going to get picked off anyway. But just get rid of it. And it looks like they're going to throw it again here out of the shotgun. No, they're going to go option, and that goes nowhere again. Swanson on the tackle for a loss. His first of the ball game. Two tackles today for the non-subscriber linebacker. Second down and 10. Clock ticking away. I formation set for VMI. And they are just content with running this clock out. They go option again. Sanders breaks a tackle, but Cash Harris is there for the tackle. And just a two-yard pickup for VMI. Dayton's going to call a timeout there on third and eight. They want the ball back. I don't blame them. You got your opponent down. You got to keep striking. 0 for 4 on third down conversions today. And make it 0 for 5. That was not even a good attempt. Fourth down and 7. Dayton calls another timeout. They will get the ball back with less than 10 seconds after this punt return. Blows Malone back deep to return it. He does have two punt returns, four scores on the season. Shaw on for the kick. They go for the block, they obviously don't get there. It wasn't even close. Gloves Malone from his own 24-yard line. And he gets it up to the 31. There's a flag for a holding. And that is on BMI. That's declined. Let's see what Dayton will do here with five seconds left. Will they let Martin heave one downfield? I want to see the most exciting play in football. The Hail Mary. And that's exactly what they're going to do, folks. Martin hit as he throws, though, and that hits the grass with one second left. So we might see another Hail Mary. Just unfortunate for Martin. The offensive line decided to forget how to block on that play. This time they'll come out five wide receivers set. And they're going to go Hail Mary again. Martin hit again. He's picked off. Oh, my goodness. Who had it? Non-subscriber corner comes through with the interception to end the first half. And he's going to come out here and spike the football. You're down by three touchdowns. What are you doing, sir? You should definitely look at the scoreboard. Somebody bench him for the rest of his life, please. It wasn't even that skilled. Like, <laughs> there wasn't that much skill involved in his interception. But well, that's going to be the end of the first half. Dayton Flyers on top of the VMI Cadets. 21-0 as the Big Ten team is dominating the Big 12 team right now. Dayton, of course, was our FCS North Tournament champions. So they do have a better player build than VMI. Or a better team build, I should say. And Bryson Shields will down this in the end zone. And VMI will start it off at their own 20-yard line. Like I've said before, you have to get the ground game working. You have to feed Cam Sanders. You have 18 yards of offense, two pick sixes, and only one first down today. You need to give your halfback the football, and you're not. You're just going to keep running it with Justin Hops and throwing it. Cash Harris, career game for him, five tackles and a sack. A bunch of tackles for a loss as well. He came into the game with only 18 tackles. He has five today. Crazy. This is reminding me of the game last night where Jermaine Marshall had a breakout game for the Dolphins. One of his best games of his career. But the Dolphins came up just short. Second and 11. I formation. They'll go option again. Hops. Not going to pitch it. He should have. And he only gets it up to the 24-yard line. So Gloves Malone, another nice tackle for the cornerback. He's been doing it all season. It's going to bring up third down and six. And I'm expecting another pass here from Justin Hops. VMI 0 for 5 on third downs. I formation set Jake Berry to the right side. And Hops will go play action. And goes deep right side. It's caught by Jake Berry to midfield. 
Finally targeting the big tight end, his 27th catch on the season. And that's a mismatch nightmare for any linebacker. He did not stand a chance on that. By the way, guys, if you have not heard yet, recruiting for new recruits, March 31st, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The recruiting video will drop. It is not going to be a premiere, so you need to be paying attention if you want to get one of the best players available. Here's an option play from Hops. Nice carry. Picks up 14 yards off the right side. But if you're a new recruit and you want to have one of the best players that you could possibly select, you need to be there at 8 o'clock when that video drops. So pay attention to the time. I posted in the Discord what you need to fill out on your comment that you need to leave on the video. So copy that, fill all the, the spaces in, and when you see the video, you'll be able to pick uh, the star player and whatever team you want. So, But just make sure that you actually pick a position that is available on the graphic that I have created for the video. So I swear to God, if there's no kicker, for a team and somebody picks a kicker for that team I'm just not even gonna respond to your comment I'm not gonna do it hops taking off right side and to get it up to the 30 yard line nice carry this time he's got 26 yards today on nine attempts that'll bring up third down and four VMI having their best drive of the ball game did you see all those star decals on Justin hops helmet that is amazing Probably due to his uh, 31 touchdowns. I'm not sure how they actually calculate the decals on the helmets, but all I know is I, I love them. Here's a handoff to the fullback. Matt Keller's got the first down, his first touch of the game. That'll get him over 370 rushing yards on the season. It's about time they utilize the fullback. I know Jet Christie is loving that. Seven play, 54 yard drive so far. 240 off the clock. Two tight end set for the cadets. And they're gonna go option again. Hops hurdles over a defender. He pitches it as he hurdled. That play was crazy. And it went for one yard. Exciting. Cam Sanders picks up one yard on the run. They're having a really hard time trying to decide how they want to run the football. If I was them right now, I'd be doing some halfback dives or some slams with Cam Sanders, they really were working against UTEP. And they absolutely destroyed UTEP. Hops, pressure, he's gonna be sacked again. Is that Tank Taylor? Oh my goodness. Tank Taylor and Cash Harris just taking turns walloping the quarterback. That's gonna bring up third down and 11 for VMI. That is not an ideal situation for a run-based team. Five wide receivers set for hops. And looking to throw. Pressured. Throws off his back foot. Deflected and almost picked off again by Gloves Malone. Justin Hops is 2 of 10 for 34 yards and two pick sixes. Bottom of the barrel type stuff right there. So VMI going to settle for a field goal attempt. This is a 44-yarder. And Dayton has a better kicker than VMI, and they couldn't make a 42-yarder. I don't see VMI making this at all. And the kick is up, and he pushes it to the right. So both kickers pushing their kicks to the right side. So VMI with a huge missed opportunity to put some points on the board. Dayton <laughs> still has the shutout intact. Shotgun set for Jared Martin. Trent Green tight end to the right. And high snap from Martin. He's looking to throw. Deep shot left side. He's got a man open. And it is dropped by Jenkins. Or Jackson, excuse me. Man, star player dropping it right through his hands. That was a perfect throw right in the bucket from Jared Martin. He's been doing that all season long since he got inserted into the starting lineup. Just unfortunate that his receiver let it slip. Second down and 10. I formation. They're going to go option play. Very rare. <laughs> with Jared Martin in there, and it goes nowhere. Third down and 10 now for the Flyers. Defense, defense, defense. 
One of five on third downs today. Henry Hamilton's on fire right now in the middle of that defensive line. Trent Green split out to the right side for Dayton. Martin will throw it. Martin, left side, man, wide open, and he overthrows him. Oh, my goodness. He, he might have got 20 extra yards out of that reception. Overthrown by two yards, and that will force Dayton to punt the football away again. The third time today that they're punting. Bryson Shields set to return it. He has two punt returns for scores this season, and he'll return it from his own 25-yard line. He's going to go right up the middle, up to about the 35. Less than two minutes to play here in the third quarter. VMI needs a touchdown, or they're going to be in some serious trouble. Cox going with the option. He is dropped for a loss of two. And that play was dead from the start. Option plays are just not working out for VMI today. I'm telling you, they need to go for some, some runs up the middle with Cam Sanders. Which they have not done at all today. Not that I can remember. Because most likely it would have been successful. Single back set. This time they do go with a halfback slam, but nobody blocks. Oh, man. I just have no answers for them, I guess. It's going to bring up third down and 11. If you're going to throw it, you got to target Jake Berry or Joseph Martin. Those are the big players. Two tight ends to the left side. Hops to throw it. And he's taken all day, and he's almost picked off again. Man. And a holding call. That's going to be declined anyway. It'll be fourth down and 11. Rondé Barber, very unhappy on the sidelines. VMI's punter is getting a workout today. Shaw on for the punt. Dayton looks like they might send a blitz here, try to block it, and they'll go safe return. And this punt's going to go out of bounds around the 30-yard line, so not really a good kick that time from Shaw. 49 seconds left in the third quarter. And the referee is running a marathon to get that football back on the field. My goodness. Jared, don't, don't start your, your cadence yet, buddy. The ball's not even placed. Five wide receivers set for Jared Martin. Henry Hamilton on fire yet again at the defensive tackle spot. And Martin will throw it. Deep shot right side, and it's another catch on that right sideline. They've been doing it all game long. This time it's Jenkins. Martin now over 2,400 passing yards on the season. First down and 10 from the 43-yard line. 165 yards of offense today for Dayton, only 70 for the Cadets. I'm going to go toss play to EJ Rowe, left side in the open field. First down and more still going out of bounds past the 40-yard line. A great run from the backup halfback. Flipping the field. Picks up 16 yards on a simple toss play to the left. Three wide receivers set to the left side for Jared Martin, who is under center. They're going to go fake toss this time. Martin over the middle, wide open. Trent Green for the first down. He just kind of sat in the empty zone. And it was not a first down, excuse me. He picked up seven yards. I don't know why. I'm just getting way ahead of myself on these, these plays. I'm too excited, too amped up. This game, definitely not like the last one. As this play is going to be the last one of the quarter. Rowe gets taken down a yard shy of the first down. And we are now going to the fourth quarter, folks. Get your fours up. Dayton on top, 21-0. Ninth-ranked Flyers over the 24th-ranked Cadets. Big 10 showing the Big 12 how to play football. Goal line set for the Flyers. Pullback in motion to the right side. And they're going to throw it. Man wide open. It's caught by James Skaggs. He hurdles. Still going down to the 10-yard line. Skaggs, his first catch of the game. 
That'll be his 15th on the season. And he probably did not need to hurdle right there. If he didn't, he might have scored. Nice play for him, his first reception of the game. He hasn't been a huge impact player for this team, but 15 catches, almost 250 yards receiving on the year with two touchdowns. Martin now at 171 passing yards today. And he's going to throw it again. Pressure throws off his back foot to the end zone. Deflected away at the last second by Darius Peters. His 21st pass deflection on the season. He also has 10 picks. That'll bring up second down and 10. Trent Green is on fire right now in the I formation. Split out to the left. Martin's going to hand it off to Rowe, who gets out to the left side. Follows Trent Green to the one-yard line. First and goal, probably an inch away from the end zone. So Trent Green on fire. He doesn't get the football, but he runs out there and makes some key blocks for Rowe as he almost gets into the end zone. They're going to come out same formation. And they're going to hand it off to Rowe again. And he walks into the end zone. This game is out of hand now 27 to nothing ninth ranked Dayton over 24th ranked BMI cadets have no answers on offense they can't stop the Dayton offense either it's just it's not working out for them today and that's disappointing for a lot of people I know uh, they performed so well against South Dakota State they had a lot of momentum coming into this game Dayton did not have a conference championship game. So a lot of people probably thought, hey, they're going to be flat-footed. They haven't played in a while. But that's just not the case. They are dominating the Cadets currently. And it's not even fair. Flyers on for the kickoff. Bryson Shields back to return along with Joseph Martin. Shields with one kick return for a score this year. Martin with three. And Shields is going to kneel this one down in the end zone. So a nice kickoff. There's 5.17 left in the game. There's still plenty of time for VMI. But they need to score touchdowns. And they need to score them quick. Shotgun set for hops. Fullback and halfback next to him. He will go option, left side. Pitches it out. Sanders has it, and he'll pick up eight yards. Nice tackle by the safety. Only 44 yards on the ground today for VMI. They averaged 237. And this is coming after a huge game against UTEP from Cam Sanders and a decent game last week against South Dakota State in the Big 12 championship game. Two tight ends set for VMI. Cam Sanders behind Hops. And they'll go play action. Hops to throw. Man, open. And a nice deflection at the last second by the non-subscriber linebacker. That'll bring up third down and two for the key bets. If you guys have not voted on the Pick'em in the Discord community, for the Bryant Bulldogs and Fresno State Bulldogs National Championship game. Go ahead and do so before tomorrow night because, well, after this game. If, if you haven't done it, do it right now or after this game uh, because I will be doing commentary right after this game is premiered. So get in there. Do it quick, guys. Fourth and inches as VMI just continues to have no answers on offense. They're going to punt the football away. It looks like they're accepting defeat, which just makes me sick to my stomach. Here's a punt return right side up to the 36-yard line. That'll be coming back, though. Flipping call on Robertson. That'll back them up to their own 20-yard line. The flyer offense coming back out there. They have controlled this entire game. Martin has been fantastic today. And the backup's actually in there. Dorian Wura in at quarterback. And they're going to hand it off to Rowe. He'll pick up one or two yards up the middle on the draw play. And it's nice to see Dorian Wura in there getting some playing time. Right. 
They actually have their entire second string in. James Skaggs in there playing some fullback. Second down and nine. Martin hands it off to Rowe, and he goes nowhere. It was not Martin, excuse me, it was Wura. <laughs> Jeez. Instantly forgot that they, I just said they had the backups in. Dayton, two of seven today on third down conversions. Watch for a Dorian Wura scramble here. He is nasty when he runs with the football. Third down and 10. Five wide receivers set. Wura, hard count. Safeties are playing up. Watch for a deep pass as well. Right side, wide open down the right sideline. This is a touchdown for the Flyers. Oh my goodness. That was too easy. That was way too easy. 80 yard touchdown pass. The safeties were playing so far up, there's no way they could have got there to help out the corner on the right side of the field. And a huge touchdown pass from Dorian Wura to the backup running back. Actually, that is the, I think, is that the number three halfback? I don't even know anymore. But Dorian Wura, <laughs> now over 1,100 passing yards on the season with seven touchdowns. And that was just... Insane. 34 to nothing. Dayton on top. On for the extra point. And the extra point is up and good. 35 nothing is the score here in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. With the Dayton Flyers taking on the VMI Cadets. Just over three minutes remaining. This game is well in hand. Flyers coming on for the kickoff. Bryson Shields, Joseph Martin back to return. They combined for four kick returns for touchdowns on the season. Can they give their team a spark? Can they give them a glimmer of hope? <laughs> Can they do something just for some pride for their team? Shields returns left side. He's in the open field past the 40. Bryson Shields might take it. Bryson Shields is gone. Finally, the Cadets get a spark from their team as Bryson Shields returns his second kickoff return for a touchdown this season. My goodness, 103 yards. He bounced off of one of his own blockers, and when he did that, it sprung him even further away from the Dayton Flyers coverage. My goodness. Thank you, VMI, <laughs> for ending the shutout. That was going to look sad in the score box, guys. Yeah, I said score box. Yeah, don't at me. Less than three minutes left. Cadets, are they going to attempt an onside kick here? It's looking like they are. They need this and, you know, three more after that. Not impossible. Not likely. And the onside kick is recovered by Dayton. That was too easy. They tried to go for the uh, bounce it off of the defender and hope that it bounces to you. But that just, it didn't work. There's an injury for Dayton. Hopefully he's okay. That was the number three tight end. Dayton at their own 46 yard line to start off this drive. All right, at VMI 46 yard line, excuse me. High formation set. Dorian Wurst still in there. And it was EJ Rowe that had that huge touchdown reception. And here's James Skaggs getting a carry. Picks up three or four yards. I know he'll be happy about that. He likes to get his carries. Shout out to James Skaggs in the chat and in the Discord. He's in the Discord. I just haven't seen him in there in a while. Hope to see you in there more often there, buddy. Second down and seven. Wurra under center. Skaggs in there at fullback yet again. Split to the left side. And they're going to go counter play to Rowe. He breaks the tackle. He's still up. Carrying a defender. He fumbles the football. And it's recovered by James Skaggs. So he makes another nice play. His first career fumble recovery. And that's going to bring up third down and two for the Dayton Flyers. They're three of eight today on third downs. BMI is 2 of 10. Their offense has done nada. Goal line set for the Flyers. Less than two minutes left in the ballgame. 
crowd trying to get behind the defense, but there's really no use anymore. And they go counter play. Rowe has it, and he's going to lose two yards. That was Trey Upton, the middle linebacker. No, that was Bryson Shields. Excuse me. On the tackle for a loss. That's his first tackle for a loss this season. And he apparently is taunting for whatever reason. I, I don't know. And Dayton's going to go for it here on fourth and four. VMI did call a timeout. There's four wide receivers on the field for Dayton. Henry Hamilton, the defensive tackle, is on fire. Wura to throw it. Left side to sideline. And that is out of bounds. So a good stop for the cadet defense. Now, all they need, guys, is four touchdowns in a minute and 41 seconds. I've seen Peyton Manning get two touchdowns in that amount of time, but not four. Shotgun set for hops. Jake Berry, tight end to the left side. They're going to keep it on the ground here, and that goes nowhere. And the crowd just goes dead silent. You can hear a pin drop in this place. Second down and 13. And it looks like VMI is just going to run this football. And that play goes for a loss of two as well. And they have just given up on this game. And it's kind of pitiful, if you ask me. I know you're down by 28 points, four touchdowns, but this is the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. you got to come out with some fire. Take some shots downfield. Try to do something. Bryson Shields, Gloves Malone, players of the game. And now Hops is going to throw the football deep downfield. Double coverage almost picked off, intended for Joseph Martin. And there's a holding call on the fullback, Leach. The backup fullback, that is. Rondy Barber upset on the sideline again. Jumping up and down, screaming at the referee. Expecting a VMI punt right here with the way they have just been nonchalantly going through this fourth quarter, and they will punt the football for the eighth time today. I'm pretty sure that's the most in one of these games all season. And Shaw on for the punt, and this is going to go out of bounds around the 22-yard line. And Dayton just has to run this clock out, and this game is over. So Dayton, the number nine ranked Dayton Flyers... The Big Ten champions are going to be Fiesta Bowl champions. So, for the Pick'em in the Discord community, the men who predicted this game correctly are Tom Schaefer, Callan Northrup, MJ Gator Jr., Michael Hines, Chris Numa, J.W. Doyle, Owen Gregory, Link, Zoomer Speed, Apollo Murray, Noah Johns, Seth Maddox, head coach of the Savannah State Tigers, Gator Bowl champions, Joseph Lozano, Emmanuel Wise, Bryson Shields, and Nick Hall. So Bryson Shields, apparently you picked against your own team, buddy, but you picked right. Second down and 12. This will be the final play of the game. And they hand it off to James Skaggs again. And he's going to pick up three more yards to add to his season total. And that's going to do it, folks. As the clock is ticking away. Man. This is not at all how I expected the Cadets to perform today. It's not at all how I expected Dayton to perform either. But it was so great to see Rob Orlandi back in there. He got another pick today that gives him 11 on the season. Tied for first in the country. And he got himself a pick six. Gloves Malone got his first career interception today. And that was a pick six. John Gruden. Doused with the Gatorade. Man, congratulations to all the Dayton Flyers. Jared Martin, Dorian Wura, Smash Jackson, Amari Manuel, Trent Green, James Skaggs, Tank Taylor, Cash Harris, Rob Orlandi, Jermaine Price, and Gloves Malone for your Tostitos Fiesta Bowl victory here in year one of our FCS Dynasty. You guys held VMI to 76 yards of offense. Absolute domination from start to finish. Hops was sacked four times. 
Two interceptions for both quarterbacks. And the only good play for VMI all day was that Bryson Shields return for a touchdown. Martin, fantastic game from him. Dorian Wurr with an 80-yard touchdown pass. It was actually to Thomas, not Rowe. Hops, 2 of 13, 34 yards, 2 picks, sacked 4 times. Worst game of his entire life. Cam Sanders only with 21 yards running today. All of them after first contact. Jake Berry with one of the two catches. 26 yards. VMI just absolutely destroyed today. Trey Upton with eight tackles for the game. That gives him 54 on the season. So a good day for the middle linebacker. William Reed, two tackles for a loss, two sacks. 21 tackles on the year now, 13 for a loss, 9 sacks. Pass deflections for Darius Peters, 22 on the year. Bryson Shields now with 14. Evan Shaw missed that field goal today too. The kickers were just awful all season long. I felt bad. Bryson Shields, 103 yard kick return for a touchdown. Of course, Jared Martin with touchdown, two picks. Throwing a one of two, 80 yards and a touchdown. Martin sacked twice today. DJ Rowe, 38 yards rushing. And one touchdown. Filling in for the injured, Smash Jackson. Hopefully Smash Jackson is healthier next season. As he missed some games for suspension this year. He's been injured a couple times. So I want to see a full season, 13 games from Smash Jackson, because he'll be in the Heisman contention for sure. Wesley with two drops today. He did have a pretty good day other than those drops though. I don't know how, I don't know if you guys realize just how dominating <laughs> Dayton's defense was today. Insane numbers. And it was everybody. Everybody was having tackles. Look at this. So many people with at least one or two tackles. It wasn't just like one person had all these stats. Cash Harris, five tackles today. He only had 18 coming into the game, so he'll finish the year with 23 on the season. And Tank Taylor had three sacks today. That'll get the defensive tackle 11 on the year. Fantastic season for him. Very proud of that young man. Gloves Malone, pick six. Rob Orlandi, a pick six. Robert Carter missed the field goal today. Pushed it to the right, as well as Evan Shaw for VMI. And nothing crazy for Dayton's special teams. DJ Rowe did have a 43-yard punt return. Gloves Malone, Rob Orlandi, Wesley, players of the game for Dayton. Shields, Reed, and Harvey, players of the game for VMI. They dropped a 9-5 on the season. Dayton finishes 11-2. So the teams finish with the same records as the teams from the Sugar Bowl. So our next bowl game, it's the final game of year one of our FCS Dynasty. The number one Bryant Bulldogs taking on the number two Fresno State Bulldogs. I'll let you guys take a look at the lovely Fiesta Bowl trophy. That's going to do it for me today. Make sure you guys vote in the Pick'em for the National Championship game before 10 o'clock tonight. Because I will be doing the commentary for that matchup right after the premiere of this video. So until our final game of the season, guys, take it easy.